Crispr scans are relatively new. They're actually a little bit, well, actually a little bit better. They're, or they're getting better anyway. Um, the iris is also unique. Now, we know when we look at the eye, here's the iris. There, the black is the pupil. The iris is the colored part. And well, the white is called the sclera, but anyway. Uh, well, when we look at a person's iris, we usually don't see all these, uh, I don't know what they are, this musculature and the, 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 the blood vessels or whatever that is. This also comes from, uh, from uh, 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 an, an IR uh Illumination. Um, so, but or uh, again, it's we don't usually see this, but everybody has a pattern like this, and it's unique. All these little uh, fluffy little uh, whatever it is, uh, thread-like things. Uh, the, it's unique to everybody. So people can be identified by that. That is an iris scan. So, like fingerprints, the this musculature over here is different for every person. Now, minor problem with this, it's even more for retinal scans, is that there can be diseases that actually cause a problem with this. Um, not as much of a problem with retinal, bi retinal biometrics, where the retina uh, over here, uh, oops, um, hang on, yeah, the retina over here is actually more likely to be damaged by diseases than uh, than the iris they're both uh, they're both affected by disease but the retina a little bit more and uh, if you have corrective lenses it might not get the picture in there you might not get the picture right uh, because the lens distorts it a little bit well we can always take tell the person to take off his glasses but if you're trying to get uh, the person from a crowd based on uh, a picture of the of, of, of you know of people in the crowd if they're wearing glasses it can be a little bit of a problem Again, people are working on this. So compare their iris scans and retinal scans. You might notice that this character, that's Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Uh, look at what he's doing. He's shoving his eyeball right into that thing. Retinal scans require that. Because as we saw, the retina is at the back of the eye. you got to get a good picture right through that all the way to the back. So you got to shove your eyeball right into the scanner. That's what he's doing. Um, it also takes a little bit of time to get a picture of the retina. So uh, uh, the iris scan, however, you don't need to do that. It's just a picture. You can uh, take use a, a decent digital camera, you know, and and take a picture from I don't know a couple of feet away, and you'll it'll be good enough. You still get the iris scan. Now you can't just use no digital camera. You need an, uh, an infrared uh, light, an infrared uh, an infrared detector. But nevertheless, it's a small device, a little about twice the size of a digital camera, maybe three times. It's like right around the size of a pair of binoculars, or maybe a little bit bigger, around that size. That's, that's, those are the ones that are being used in the field. Uh, and you take a picture of people with that. It just takes, you know, a second or two. So retinas, uh, they don't get as affected by disease. And, uh, they do, retinas are affected by disease and aging. Irises, not as much. Somewhat, but not as much. So this, uh, you know, this character here, Edna Mode, he is behind the times. He's using a retinal scan instead of an iris scan. That's too bad. Anyway, um, the let's talk more about iris scanning because it's it's actually the wave of the future. The retinal scans are being phased out. Iris scanning is coming in. Uh, I've heard that retinal scans are a little bit more precise, but I think the iris scanning is getting to be better and better, uh, and it's on the level of retinal scans. It's easier. It's easier to do with many people also. The idea is that they use the infrared light, that's light that of a longer wavelength than red. It's invisible to people. But you, sh you uh, shine this infrared light on it, uh, the other infrared light that comes back can be, can be, can be imaged by your, your iris scanner. So you can actually get, pick up all, these little, all this little musculature over there uh, and its uniqueness for each person. What happens is, okay, once you get the picture, you isolate the iris from, from everything else. And it sure seems very easy, like the inside is black, the outside is a different color. Um, what they use is polar coordinates and phasor sectioning. I'm not going to talk much about that. It's generally um, like you take a little section. As you go from, let's say, a, a designated place, let's say over here, you go around the eye and get images from every sector as you go all around. That's like the polar coordinates. And you go all around and you get the image of this, and you get the image of that, that. Everybody's eye is in a circle. So you can uh, certainly relate each sector to each sector that every other person has 
and compare and see if it's and see how different it is until you find a match. So um, there are again these these things are unique, and once you identify the points of interest, you use you say you save these, make sure well make sure they're saved, and they can be they can be put into a database. So if you if you uh, take a picture of let's say a criminal or let's say, or, or someone you suspect, well, you just uh, you know, take the picture, take the iris scan, uh, put a, you know, compare it to all the other iris scans in the database, and you can find like the identity, the identity of the person that you just picked up, just like a fingerprint. It's a little bit easier than a fingerprint. However, fingerprints are, have been around a lot more, and we have a lot more fingerprints on record. It really does not take much time to, uh, to process this thing. And it even doesn't even take that much memory, so you can uh, easily hold, you know, millions of them on a home computer, or billions of them, maybe even on, I don't know how many, but you can hold a lot of them on a, on a regular computer. So uh, you don't have to go to any centralized location. But anyway, even that's not such a big deal. Computers can be connected via the internet. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's one of the advantages of the iris scans. Okay, the benefits it takes very little time. You can just tell a whole town, let's say, of 200 people to line up. In a couple of hours, they'll be done. Um, uh, this is all digital. Your information is all digital, so you can always you know, send your v data via the computer and get it pretty easy, get it done pretty quickly. You don't need experts. The information comes just from a picture, and uh, the digitization is immediate, so you know, the information just can be done by anybody. Just cl you know, click with your uh, iris scanner and uh, tell somebody to send it for analysis. This, by the way, was done very often in Afghanistan with our troops there. They uh, would get into a town and they would, you know, take they'd take iris scans of everybody in the town, and they would do that to, and they would do it, you know, the several towns they were in. This is one one of the things that they did. They, uh, especially a suspected town, a town that had suspected terrorists or enemy soldiers in there, they took an iris scan of everybody. Then later on, when they caught somebody doing it, they were able to to they were able to relate it to where their home was. So you can find out, did they have any Confederates in that town, or what the person's real name was, if they gave the real name when they were in the town. Yeah, I mean, a lot of uh, people were caught and, and identified this way. It also helps to identify dead bodies. That if they have a dead, an iris scan, and then they're, they're found dead, and there's, they were stripped of all their, their, their wallet, how do you know who they are? Well, uh, if their their iris scan is on record, just take another picture of this person's the dead body's iris. Um, you know, compared to what's in the database of the, of the few local towns that the army was in, and you'll find the the person who it belongs to, and the body can recover the the the, the family can recover the body. So this is faster and more easy than fingerprint analysis. Even though fingerprint analysis do, oh, does the same thing, you uh, fingerprint everybody, uh, you can have information, but as we mentioned, when it comes to fingerprints, you've got to have somebody analyzing the fingerprint. It's not, you can't just let a computer do everything. A person actually has to oversee, has to actually, uh, like, verify it or, or identify the, you know, different, the minutia, as we mentioned. Uh, the iris scans are all done automatically. Information comes automatic and comparisons are automatic. So it's a little bit faster than computers and a little bit, a little bit more foolproof than, than sorry, than fingerprints, but it, uh, and a little bit more foolproof than fingerprints. However, you have to actually have people's irises. Now, the fingerprints are not going away. Criminals do accidentally leave their fingerprints on services. They don't leave their irises around uh, around it. So uh, certainly, fingerprints are not being phased out.